My name is Camilla Markram and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Frontiers, which is an open access publisher and also research network for scientists and academics overall. We started Frontiers because we felt, as scientists, a lot of frustrations when we were uh, publishing our papers. It was because uh, there are somehow colleagues in the same field believe that maybe this is not an adept study for this high impact uh, paper. It's not outstanding enough and not novel enough and not significant enough and so forth. And um, we decided to actually do something about it. Uh, so we thought, what would be the most ideal publisher? What is it that we would like to have from a publisher and how should a publisher act and behave. Um, so we decided then to uh, create this type of utopia and, and go for it and do it. So we thought that we needed to change the mandate from the traditional peer review, which is really focused on what is an outstanding discovery, uh, what is a significant or novel discovery, to rather being to far more objective criteria. Because authors and reviewers, they actually interact di directly with each other in this collaborative peer review forum, and they can exchange um, as many comments as they like. This is a big difference, I believe, to anybody, any other publisher. In fact, this is unique in, in publishing. We were the very first publisher as well uh, to introduce article level metrics. Views, downloads initially, then citations, social buzz via of metrics, for example, uh, around these articles. So that, that um, is as well a very important way of, of how to evaluate articles and the scientific merit of articles. But the last point to it is basically that we, taking these article level metrics, we developed a process that is called tiering. So if a certain article over a certain period of time, let's say three months or so, uh, reaches a, a big amount of views and downloads, we will suggest it to the chief editors. They will check the, again, you know, like the article, and then they will ask the authors uh, to write a focused review. And this focused review puts the initial discovery into a broader context and is aimed at um, uh, really involving uh, or writing it for a bigger community, basically, for a bigger academic community to make it more accessible to them as well. Our goal is definitely to stimulate interdisciplinary research. So w when we actually launched Frontiers, we launched it in a way that you have the fields and you have the specialty sections, and these specialty sections can actually be connected to many fields. So by bringing them together into one platform and putting these um, specialty sections in the different fields, we're trying to expose um, the content to many different uh, communities and stimulate and collaborate and make them known amongst each other. So today we're publishing worldwide, probably not we at Frontiers, but general, as, hum, as a human race, we're publishing about 2.5 to 3 million articles per year. By 2020, it will be 4 million articles. Many of these articles will be in the open access um, uh, sphere uh, within a couple of years. And the vast majority of it, actually. And that's really where Loop comes in, the, the social network as well, is how can we not only make the articles accessible to anybody, but m make them as well uh, efficiently accessible to anybody. So today you, for example, have to search, you go to PubMed or to Google Scholar and you have to search yourself actively for these articles. But we're thinking about delivering these articles uh, to your doorstep. Nine million scientists by 2020, it's, it's actually a, a big competitive field uh, nowadays. So you gotta make yourself shine somehow against all of this quite fierce competition for, for grant money, for tenure positions and so forth. So this is really where Loop again comes in uh, uh, with a mission to maximize impact uh, for, for scientists. And disseminate the discoveries in a way that the right people will read it, whether it's other scientists, your fellow colleagues, but as well maybe funding agencies, uh, the people that evaluate scientists as well at universities. They need to know what you as a scientist are, are, are publishing. So we've inserted it in the Frontiers platform in many, many different places. And what we have as well done this year in January is to insert these loop profiles in a collaboration with Nature, now as well into Nature articles. And we are taking it even a step further. Right now we are in discussions with uh, 
several universities to integrate this as well into their workflows at the universities in their lab pages. So you can access and see the broader picture of who a researcher is. Our goal is to bring scientific communities together to make um, the science um, more understandable to other scientists. That's part of the tiering process and the focused reviews that we developed. But we also have a public outreach program and there we are particularly looking at kids. So this is a journal that we have launched last year, which was actually an idea uh, by one of our editors-in-chief, um, great scientist from uh, UC Berkeley, uh, Dr. Robert Knight. And the aim of this journal is to take scientific discoveries that are published in Frontiers, but as well maybe in Nature or any other journal out there actually, translate them, make the authors translate them into a kid's language, and then the children actually do the peer review on these articles. So these are as well scientific articles, but they're peer reviewed by, by kids together with a, with a scientist, which acts as a mentor to mentor them through the process. But as well to, to help kids to get into the scientific process as early as possible, because I personally believe, and, and I'm not alone in that, that science is the fabric of modern society. Scientists and academics are modern day heroes. So the earlier you actually get in touch with them, the more our human race might benefit from it.